Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It is Blanca Rodriguez, and she's an author, she's a speaker, she's a coach, and she is, wait, I, I missed one, I missed one. What did I miss? I missed something. Well, Massage therapist, group fitness instructor, educator. Yes. <laughs> and she also has her own podcast. And so and so I, I encourage you to go on her podcast, listen to her, her podcast, because they're amazing. And she hears she today she wanted to speak about perimenopause and menopause and how it can actually by using massage therapy, how you could actually help perimenopause and menopause, something that women go through. We struggle with it. It affects our lives and it, and it affects you know, the lives of our partners and, you know, and our relationships and our overall lives, really, because your mood is affected, you're, you get fatigue. There's so many different things it affects in our body. So today, Blanca is going to talk about different ways to help you with perimenopause and menopause. So I'm so excited to hear you talk today. This is a topic that is well needed. And I'm just, you know, I'm thrilled to, to hear your input on it. So tell us a little about it. Yes, thank you so much, Stacy, for having me here again. And <laughs> yes, I've been going through, I, I can say my story with when it comes to perimenopause and menopausal stages. And as you know, I'm a licensed massage therapist and I'm a group fitness instructor. And I have seen living through menopause myself as a woman and seeing other women going through these stages. The very basics of perimenopause and especially menopause. Menopause starts when your period stops completely. And according to many doctors, a year has passed since your period starts stops completely. That is when unofficially, officially, your menopause starts. But yes. the symptoms and the signs of menopause, they start in our perimenopausal stages. In general terms, when we are in our mid to late 40s, in many cases, this is when the perimenopausal stages start. But in a lot of people, a lot of women, for example, women that had a premature period, let's say when they were seven or eight years old, they're most likely bound to have these stages starting earlier in life, like even their mid to late 30s even. And no, this is not to be demonized or anything, which has been to, for way too long in history. This is a natural process of our bodies. Every single woman in this planet will go through the changes of, I mean, and, and hey, let's face it, we are changing from the moment of conception to the moment of our passing and perimenopause and menopause is a huge part of our natural changes and it has to do with our anatomy and physiology. Testosterone and progesterone, these two hormones are created in our reproductive systems. Yes, ladies, we do have testosterone levels as well, but they are not as high as the gentlemen. And for the listeners that don't know, yes, our men go through these changes too. Yes, they go through the frustration. Yes, they go through the stress, the anxiety, the isolation of these changes as well. But for some reason or another, menopause has been criticized, demonized, and stereotyped of over and over and over throughout history. For example, my mother in her menopausal ages, she never talked about being in perimenopause or menopause. This, this was way back in the day. She used to drink a pill called Premarin back in the day. Well, I just found out reading the New York Times that Premarin had an additive and it was horse pee, horse mm -hmm. pee. Women in menopause were drinking a pill with horse pee for whatever reason that was. I really don't understand it because uh, this is part of an uh, elimination system. And why are we eliminating and when we when when we pee and poo? Toxins, toxic and waste that we don't need in our bodies. Same yeah. exact thing with 
horse pee because they are mammals and so are we. So that was something it's like, wow, that got me thinking. And it's like, wow, it's so difficult to hear how back in the 70s and 80s, menopause was treated, which was close to no treatment whatsoever. Right. They were alone. They were isolated. They were, and, and even OBGYNs had no clue. And many of them don't have a clue to this day of how to work with patients around their perimenopause and menopausal stages. But this is when massage therapy comes in on, and give us hope on making us feel better from one session only. And this what? is what happens with one session of massage therapy. The stress hormone cortisol, the levels of this stress hormone with massage will go down 31%. That oh is why we feel so relaxed. We feel like we could melt on the table. We feel like a noodle. We feel like we want to go to sleep after a massage. And mm -hmm. on the other hand, the happy chemicals of our bodies, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, these levels go up 30%. That is why we feel so at ease with mm -hmm. massage therapy. And it's an excellent, excellent help for our menopausal stages because not only these happy chemicals of our bodies get really happy and free but we feel more relaxed we feel mm -hmm. stress-free our levels of anxiety go down there is one powerful massage called lymphatic drainage that is highly recommended for women in menopause there's a because of hormonal systems being uh, being held tremendously through lymphatic drainage massage. Another massage that is, I think it's like the, one of the most well-known massages in the world is Swedish massage. Swedish massage when the practitioner is focusing on the abdominal area and the lower back area is of great help with discomfort. Another one, very, very important that I absolutely love is hot stone massage with mm. the warm stones on the body. This is like fighting fire with fire with the effects of the hot stones on the lower back areas or abdominal areas. It helps contain hot flashes. Imagine wow. that. And of course, massage therapy help us improving our sleep, help us with clarity of mind, help us with brain fog, help us with de-stressing. And what are the biggest symptoms of and signs of perimenopause and menopause? Well, stress, confusion, lack of sleep, feeling tired all the time, brain fog, forgetfulness, and yes, anger. This happens to all of us in some way or form. And let's not forget that we are not alone. The gentleman, even though this is not criticized, demonized, pointed at the finger, and it's more in, in this in our culture and many cultures, men go through midlife crisis how pretty it sounds how glorified it is but on the other hand yes they go through the almost the same exact situations that we go through confusion anger lack of sleep and well let's face it our men most of the time they're grumpy but that's another story for another day but in in reality us ladies we and the gentlemen as well we have many options to go have a smooth ride through this change in our lives that is unavoidable that's for sure you know it's it's amazing because when it comes to when it comes to perimenopause and menopause you know i was thinking when you were going over everything also i read a study a while back ago and they talked about even menstruation and ovulation their hormones also rise 
you know, twice a month also. So they go through an ovulation, but they don't go through it like a woman. Their hormones rise, they have changes, their mood swings, um, they might feel more fatigue. And also during menstruation as well, their hormones rise, it changes, it lowers. And they also go through the similar symptoms that we go through. It's just not physical, like, you know, where you could go through and, you know, when you go through menstruation, we know that we menstruate because we bleed, you know, yes. where they go through the same things, but it's not, they don't see the physical, you know, um, changes, you know, in that, in that, that retrospect, but yes, it, it is so powerful when it comes to perimenopause and menopause, it, it's, it's something that changes your entire life. You know, it, you go from uh, being a young, vibrant individual, and then all of a sudden your body starts to change and you're seeing all these different symptoms and, it, and it's, it's very, it's, first of all, for me, I didn't even know what was going on. I was just shocked because I was so young when I started going through perimenopause. I didn't even know what was happening. I just didn't like the way I was feeling. I didn't like, you know, that I saw the symptoms and I didn't know what was happening. And, and perimenopause was the last thing from my mind because I was so young. It could happen really at any age, depending on your, your background and your DNA and how your body functions. There's a lot of, you know, attributes. But I know for one thing, too, is that the cortisol level takes a big, uh, you know, plunge. Most women and, and even men, their cortisol level, go, you know, starts to rocket for a lot of them. And right. for, and it, for you, you, you can easily gain weight when you have high cortisol. Mm -hmm. Many, you know, complain that it's very hard for them to lose weight. And sometimes they just looked in the mirror one day and they had all this weight around their tummy and hips and they didn't know where it came from. And all of a sudden it was there. And then they tried to lose it and they're frustrated because women in menopause and perimenopause have a very difficult time are, you know, and, and also, you know, our metabolism changes. So mm -hmm. then you're going through that. And then the libido was another issue. A lot of women had come to me and talked about where they didn't have the urge to want to, you know, have sex as much. And, you know, and they didn't have, you know, they, they had a hard time reaching orgasm and their husbands weren't going through this. And a lot of times the husbands didn't understand what their, yeah. their, their partners were going through, you know, or their, you know, and, and so these are like big issues, you know, and I'm glad you're bringing them up. And, and I like the fact that you're bringing up natural ways like massage therapy and how I, you know, that was very shocking that 31% your cortisol level could go, decrease just by yes. one just by one session and and it's very important to for the audience to know and understand that there are options to ease and make things more bearable and the challenges not to be so many and a part of big part of it is lack of information and I'm a, I'm a true believer that the more informed we are about something the better it is to understand when I when I started with my perimenopause in my mid forties, I was like, what is happening to me? Because it was like a boom. All yes. of a sudden things, I felt like things were going downhill. I was feeling overly tired. I'm like, well, I haven't done anything different here. What is going on? And it wasn't until I took of my time and effort to go for the information and understand it better that I said, okay, things are starting to making, to make much more sense. What are the recommendations to make it as bearable as possible? And for this process, not to, it, even though it's life changing because it is unavoidable, it is a life changing event. That is for sure. But how do we make it bearable how do we still have quality of life in the process how do we thrive instead of eh, i'm surviving because i feel like crap all the time i mean and most of the time is mindset mindset yeah. is everything the more open we are about these conversations the better off we will be i have done quite a few speeches to groups of women of all ages about perimenopause and menopause. And the moment that I ask, who is in perimenopause or menopause? Lift up your hand and I'm the first one to lift my hand. Those hands is like, 
like yep. in fear. You are in fear of admitting to something that is a natural process of your body. It's a natural process that is unavoidable in our bodies. And if newsflash, if you have a full hysterectomy and whenever your menstruation stop, whether it is because of natural, because nature called and said, and said so, or because of you have surgery that you don't have your menstruation anymore, menopause starts immediately. The right. second, the moment that menstruation is not there, menopause starts. And this is very hard for a lot of people to see and accept, but the more mindful we are the more awareness that we have about this extremely important conversation the better off many women will be many people and i want to inform this because this is very important many people that have mental illnesses like just depression ptsd whatever the case may be you may be these unfortunately these symptoms may even aggravate your mental health even more that is why so important and so vital that when you're not feeling well in your 40s mid 40s or 50s you don't walk you run to your doctor and tell him how are you feeling in my experience i have found that a lot of obgyns have no comprehension of what a woman in menopause is going through her reproductive system. Yes. There is there is this phenomenal, phenomenal website that is called the North American Menopause Society, NAMS, mm -hmm. okay, N-A-M-S. This beautiful platform walks all of us through everything that we know that we didn't know that may happen. And they even have a long list of OBGYNs by state and name of these people that are specialized in menopausal women. OBGYNs, very important for people to know this because it can be a great helper. I didn't have any help, but once I found out of, of, about all of these excellent tools that can help us cope in an easier way and make our daily lives easier and bearable, manageable, happier. Hey, the better off we are, definitely. And this is something very important that I wanted to share with all of our listeners because us women, you know, we rock. We mm -hmm. are badasses. We bear children, okay? So it's very important for us that the more of queens we remain, the better off we are. And another point that is very important to bring is relationships. I am married to the same man for the last 11 years of my life. I married him at age 48. I was, I was full-blown perimenopausal stages. But my sexuality was fine. My sexuality was the last thing to go out the window when I started my full-blown menopause. And instead of going in isolation, confusion, shame, guilt, all of these happen to us ladies because we are not able to deliver something as powerful and important as intimacy, especially with our husbands. I went to my husband and I said, honey, I was crying and everything. I was frustrated. I was sad. And it's like, what is happening to me? And he's like, well, honey, you're menopausal. And we have maintained open communication to this day. And many days I tell my husband, oh, honey, I miss our sex. Oh, <laughs> man. And he's like, oh, don't worry. Don't worry. And this is the thing. Your man loves you for you, okay? And in these trying times, and it's a season that can last years, the more communication, the more open communication you have with your loved one about this very important conversation, the better things will be. Because, hey, 
for sex, there is a lot of options out there and you can explore, you can play around. There is help, there is lotions, there is gels, there is even, I mean, and mind you, these are all natural. These are no natural ingredients, not necessarily full of estrogen or progesterone or whatever the case may be. So I will highly recommend to all of our ladies out there, if you're feeling different, that you're going through changes, don't hesitate on going to the correct forms of communication, okay? And that's why the National, the North American Menopausal Society takes you exactly, they guide you by the hand where you need to be and picking an OBGYN that knows about menopause is imperative when you choose your gyno for this very important and yes, challenging season of your life. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. You know, right before the show, we were talking about some of these issues and you had, you know, I had mentioned to you when I started going through perimenopause and I was heading towards menopause and I went to want to get help. I went to my GYN and the first thing they wanted to do is put me on birth control or give me a hysterectomy. And I said, what? I said, I said, I'm not going on birth control. And I said, even with the medication I take, that would, that would, that would kill the potency of, of the, of the, of the other medication, mm -hmm. the birth control. And I don't want to have the side effects of birth control. I said, I, I, I take medication. I don't want to take any more medication if it's not needed. I said, and I, why would I put myself in, in, in the point where I get a hysterectomy? Then I go into post-menopause. Then my exactly. body's even older then, and it's functioning older. And then I have more problems to deal with. I'm mm -hmm. a 50 year old woman. I want to enjoy my vibrancy. I'm in the middle of my life. I'm in the prime of my life. I want to enjoy it. You right. know, I was really annoyed. And then I went to a functional medicine doctor and they did a full blood workout to see where I was lacking. And then they found out what hormones I was, I was low in. And then they found out what vitamins and nutrients my body needed. Mm -hmm. And so I took the natural route and then I went to see a specialist, like you were saying, who deals with menopause, who understands menopause and what a total different viewpoint. They, they were looking at it from a completely different approach. Mm -hmm. And when I told them what the GYN said, they just, he just shook his head back and forth. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> unreal that is so so true yes that there's so many professionals that have everything to do with our reproductive system that they have no comprehension of what is the process in our bodies physically yeah. anatomically speaking about perimenopause and menopause another yeah. point that i really wanted to bring up is how our eating habits can make a difference a, a drastic difference for the good or the bad when it comes to menopausal and perimenopausal stages. I have a very good friend that she is a certified dietitian and her specialty is getting diets for, or better eating habits because diet can be uh, a boo-boo and it, it can be scary for many. It's like diet, holy smokes. I don't want to hear anything about no damn diet. So yes. uh, this, this, fabulous woman she specializes on helping people with improving her their eating habits in this process and yeah. of course uh, one of the things that i have heard from her is that the more alkaline our body is the happier the body will be versus putting so much acid in our bodies like i don't know meat for example i eat meat Okay, and I know that it's acid, but overeating meat can make our body acidic. And what happens in a body that is acidic? Well, diseases are very friendly. They love acid in our bodies versus having a more alkalized body that is more calming, more soothing, and we will feel better. I, yes. I'm going to go back to my mother and her upbringing and how difficult her reproduct uh, dealing with her reproductive system was. She was yes. in extreme, she grew up in extreme poverty. So she was malnourished and she suffered from malnutrition for many, many years of her life, including her puberty. The moment when you have your first 
period. So she went through a very difficult moments in her life when she was at that time. And then fast forward, she kept on having reproductive system issues after birth, after birth. And it was, it wasn't about pregnancy because she always told me that her pregnancies were good. She had big babies. I was eight and a half pounds. My brother was nine pounds and she is 410 so she was like a very small lady with a big belly and her pregnancies were good she didn't have c-sections or anything but after that then is when the trouble started when her perimenopausal stages and her menopausal stages that's when she had a lot of trouble not only because she had mental illness but her body was reacting horrific horrifically in the sense of her ups and her downs where you, you didn't know which one was more intense than the other. And, and it was a very confusing world for her because there was no information about what to do in these cases, what to do in her case. And many millions of women back in those days that they didn't have the tools that we possess now, the information that we can find on something as amazing as a podcast sharing it with as many people as in the world as possible. And another, um, one of the many, some of the many options for having more peace of mind in while going through this season of menopause and not only the season of menopause, but for quality, better quality of life in general for, for the rest of our lives is exercising gratitude, be having, being more grateful for the simplest things that we have in our lives, yes. having more physical activity, going into either prayer or meditation. I do guided meditation every single day of my life. I don't really practice silent meditation because I get distracted and I will be, oh my God, look at the butterfly, look at the squirrel. Yeah. And I will be like a dog distracted by anything and everything. So I don't really practice it that way, but I practice guided meditation YouTube University, I call YouTube University because you can learn everything and anything in YouTube. And I, I do five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute, whatever the case may be, whatever language like, there is always yeah. beautiful options for guided meditation, depending on how you feel during the day. Yeah. There's, there's meditation for confusion, there's meditation for stress, there's meditation for happy meditation to go to sleep and so much more. I could be all day telling you how many different meditations there are out there, prayer, meditation, stretching, doing some outdoors. And those are things having much better uh, physical activity because movement is medicine and believe it or not you do some physical activity after dinner you do 15 20 minutes of walking and your digestion is much better than just sitting on the couch and watching the news okay besides watching the news is too stressful so i wouldn't go that route for anything things that are calming and soothing for you everybody is different but the more calm you are the better you will be Doing breathing exercises, how powerful and effective breathing exercises are. You do counts of four, but four seconds. One, calmly, not one, two, three, four. It's one, two, three, four. And with that count, you do four counts of inhaling, four counts of holding your breath, four counts of exhaling, and four count of Hold in your breath again. That is the box breathing. You do it three repetitions of this. I guarantee to you that you will feel calmer. I use these techniques every single day because I take care of of a lot of people and very chaotic situations and breathing is everything. And a lot of people ask me, how do you stay calm? I said, well, I breathe. I breathe slowly, deeply, and not only we have better oxygenation in our bodies, but our hearts will be happier with us as well because it's a calming effect. It's calming down those stress hormones and making these happy hormones blossom and shine even more through okay so these are simple techniques that can be used every single day and you don't need to go even to a gym to yeah. make it happen highly recommended 
I love it. I love it. You know, I think it's so important that we incorporate these things in our lives. And I think it, it does play a difference because when I practice and I do it on a regular basis, I see the difference. I see the difference in the, my clarity. I see the difference in my stress level. It, it decreases tremendously. And I struggled with cortisol after I was fine up until a certain age. When I started to get into perimenopause, that's when my cortisol level just rose, you know, and I struggled to get it down, you know, but I find when I do, you know, we all have our own, I like that you said, like our own way of meditating because, you know, everybody is different and you have to do what's comfortable for you. And there's so mm -hmm. many different ways to incorporate meditation, you know, that, that will be beneficial, you know, so you, you could even do it sitting in your chair if you wanted to, you know, um, you know, some people do it at work and then nobody even know that they're actually meditating. They're taking a few minutes just to get themselves to that level of calmness. And it, sometimes mm -hmm. it's well needed in order to function. And, you know, I think, you know, in today's society, especially for women, even men, you know, should take this, you know, into consideration because it's very hard for women. And, you know, and men also go through changes and you notice, and I've noticed in men's personalities, men become more sensitive, men start to get, you know, more self-conscious, their self-esteem is a little bit different. I've noticed these things in a lot of, of, of my male friends, you know, around a certain time of age. They mm -hmm. start to change in their personality. And, you know, I, I, especially with women, like I like what you said also is that a lot of women, for some reason, fear about talking about, they're embarrassed to talk about these issues. They'll bring it up with close friends, maybe in a small group or at dinner time, you know, when they're all around each other or having a glass of wine, but they're, they don't want to talk about it. You know, they're embarrassed and they shouldn't be because mm -hmm. everybody goes through it. And, you know, and I think libido is like a big issue too for a lot of women, you know, painful sex, libido, not being able to, you know, have the same feelings as they did when they were younger, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they want it, they want to improve their, their sexual life. And I, and I think food is definitely a, an issue, you know, how we eat affects our body completely, you right. know, um, do you, do you have any thoughts about maybe different supplements like maca is usually used a lot, you know, to help with increasing libido and, and things like that, you know, what are some ways that you think could help a woman, you know, when it comes to libido, because that's a big issue when I, when I would hear people talk the, for women, especially libido and hot flashes were like two of the biggest things that you, you hear women talk about all the time. Yes, definitely. Um, massage is an excellent way to help with hot flashes and help with stress, anxiety, when, particularly when the abdominal area and the lower back area is addressed and taken care of with being more specific on that massage. So massage therapy and client or patient needs to have like very good open communication there and women that have massages communicate, say it all. We don't judge. We are here to help you feel better. And communication is key and vital, not only for you to get the effects that you want with this specific massage, lymphatic yeah. drainage massage, hustle massage, Swedish massage, that they focus on, oh, and even, even uh, energy work, which is Reiki, it helps tremendously with your reproductive system because we are beings of energy. I used to have, uh, I used to trade with this beautiful woman and massage for Reiki treatments. So mm -hmm. she will do Reiki on me and she will be over and over. Oh my God, your reproductive system is so cold and it's so cold. And of course it is. Of course it is that, that energy level in there, it was downhill, downhill. Yeah. So how to help with that energy work really is impressive and is very very effective i promise you that they are lotions they are supplements i i, I don't know if i am chewing the word but there's this supplement from india called ashwanga ashwanga yeah. yes an mm -hmm. uh, herbalist I, we were talking and a colleague of mine and she's an herbalist i was talking to her he's like how can i get more humidity from the inside out and yeah. she's like oh ashwanga 
And she, <laughs> just like that, it came out. And I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, this herb is supposed to help you with humidity for life. You can have yeah. the supplement for the rest of your natural life. And so I am. And in my, because everybody's different, we're all individuals, we're all different. But in my experience, it worked. Okay. Yeah. It works. I feel it. I, I feel it in my insides. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it, it feels better. And when I have intimacy with my husband, oh, it's not painful. Oh, I'm not bleeding. So yes, it really works. But, you know, look for what works for you. In my case, I throw in everything that can help me. Everything. Why? Because if it's not going to do me any good, it won't make me any harm because these, are, these right. are still natural products that won't do any harm, that won't right. interact with anything else. And yes. on the other hand, if you're having any medication, and this is what I have heard from many herbalists in my career, is this. Have your medication and wait at least an hour and a half for the medication to go through the bloodstream before you have your supplements to avoid interaction or no effect whatsoever. So please be right. aware of, of that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and also like if you take like medications, like any type of, you know, strong medications, like cholesterol medication, heart medication, um, you know, anti-convulsion medication, depression medication, you mm -hmm. might want to check with your doctor because those, those are strong medications. But if you're not, if you're not going through like a, a, a really bad, um, you know, health issue, you know, like you said, that does an excellent advice, wait for an hour, hour and a half, and then take the, the, the supplement. And, you know, maca is really good. Um, horny goat wheat is really good. They make that actually in a honey and you could actually put it in your tea if you wanted to. Love it. Horny yeah. goat weed. Oh my horny God. Goat weed. Yeah. I am writing it down. Are you, I mean, are the <laughs> listeners writing this down? I, I, I hope I, so. I really recommend that you write it down right now. Holy God, this is great. Such great information. Wow. This is so good. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's hard when you get older and things start to change and, and, you know, and you, you go through these changes and, you know, and, and husbands have a hard time understanding too. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I feel like husbands or partners sometimes think about if they've been with you for a while, they think about how you were when they first met you and they don't understand that, you know, there's a lot of changes going on because they Absolutely. don't have a female body, you know, or if they do, you know, or if they, or if you have a partner and, and, and they're a female, you're going through different stages at different times, most likely. So, right. you know, or, or your chain, your symptoms may be different than your partner's symptoms. So how are they supposed to know, you know, what you're going through? Because it, it could be different. I have a friend that consistently gets hot flashes. I've only gotten like maybe two hot flashes and all my other symptoms, you know, were all the other stuff, you know? So it's like, it's different for everybody, but Absolutely. if we, if we understand the concept, we do the research. I love that you mentioned that organization. They can look into that. You know, then you start to understand. And then you could even, even if your partners do a little research and let them learn about it so they can understand what you're going through. I think, I think that communication is important too, you know, and uh, you definitely, you know, the way you eat, the, you know, the, the supplements or nutrients you incorporate, I think those are such important things that can, mm -hmm. you know, play such a huge role on, on how you feel too. And, um, you know, even if you could do a little exercise, incorporate, I think, exercise in it too. You know, what, what are your suggestions about exercise? Any kind of physical activity is great activity. Movement is medicine any kind of physical activity, walking your dog. If you have a dog at home, there's no excuse. Walk your dog 15, 20 minutes, whatever times of the day that doggy needs to go outside. Okay. Very, yeah. very important. Swim. If you have any ish, physical issues, go for a swim walk on a walk in a pool okay walking in a pool and making current in that pool do a circle a circle a circle and then turn around and go against that current that you created in the pool and right there you will have some lymphatic movement right that right there how much of a great double whammy this is stretching 
oh my God, how important it is. They are, I mean, look it up. There are chair stretches. There are, I mean, even sitting on your chair, you can have and do some physical activity. How important it is to stretch our hands, our wrists, our arms, because we are grabbing the phone all day long, especially people that yeah. are on the run, they are working from our from their phones, well, yes. our phones, because I do the same thing too, how important it is to have some good stretching of those limbs, stretch your neck, and there is no excuse, no excuse, because you may have scoliosis or whatever the case may be. I have wear and tear. I have scoliosis on my neck. I have sciatic issues and I am not going to let that limit me because right. when we are not in movements, our body will feel the effects of whatever wear and tear we may have to yeah. a bigger level versus doing some good physical activity, whatever physical activity you choose, do Pilates, do yoga, dance, Zumba. I mean, anything that you that it resonates with you please go yeah. ahead and do it or try some things hey a lot of people love crossfit that is definitely not for me but a lot of people do love yeah. it and there's for the older population because i taught for a lot of the older population and in, in 55 plus communities chair classes are powerful you use that chair for your workout how yeah. important and wonderful that is because these things you can apply at home. You don't even have to go anywhere to remember that, oh, I can lift this leg. I mean, I don't feel too balanced, but I can sit on the chair and lift this leg over and over and over. And yeah. your quads will improve the movement. It will help you to go up and down those stairs. It will help you get in and out of a car for yeah. with more ease. How simple but important these movements are. So there's no excuse. And remember, everybody, when you want, when you really want something, you do anything to get yeah. it done. Okay, so self-care is the best care and the best investment that any one of us can do is investing yes. on ourselves that is a fact 100%. yes i agree totally totally if you had to take today's um session uh, what would you like to emphasize that you think are important for the listeners to understand the more informed about that we are about anything that we have doubts with the better off we will be go to forms of, I mean, of information that are truthful, okay? Don't, just don't go to Facebook looking for an answer of a question that is more important than opinions of strangers from all over the world, because that's when misinformation happens, okay? Go to straight to the best source there is. You go to the best sources because... Let's put it this way. You want to learn from world class, not from mom and pop store. All right. And, and that is that that is the, the way it is. That's so that's the kind of student I always am. And I'm going to repeat again. The platform for menopausal help is the North American menopausal uh, men menopausal society. Okay. I am not getting paid for this. This is, I, I'm not getting any financial gain with this. It's just that this platform has helped me so tremendously with my season that is still going on of <laughs> menopause that why not share it with all of our listeners and you can get the same help that I do. So I highly, highly recommend it. Get a life coach if you can. I had, I have a life coach and that's how I became a life coach because it was so powerful for me. It was so helpful with mm -hmm. my confusing days that I felt like I didn't want to do nothing when I had a pile yes. of things to do and I got too overwhelmed to get it done because it was too much to do. Okay. This is when Life coaching really helped me through it all and it keeps my helping me to this day. I highly recommend pick up any tool that works for you. Use it. Invest yes. in your good mental and physical being. You are worth it. Don't do it alone. Yes, 100%. 100%. 
I, I think today is amazing. Now you also have a book. Yeah, tell everybody about your book. Yes, the book name is Impact Leadership with Blanca E. Rodriguez. I'm available in Amazon Kindle and paperbacks. And my and you can get the book at my website, woundedhealer.us. And for all of our listeners, I got a gift for you guys and girls. I have a gift of one hour or so of life coaching no compromise, no obligation, and is confidential, okay? And this is my gift for you because the best gift is the one of giving. And if these tools have worked so beautifully on me, I believe that they can work on you too. So that, that's it. I love it. I love it. And also for your services, can you tell us a little about your services and how people can contact you for your services? Yes, absolutely. I and the owner of Wounded Healer LLC. WoundedHealer.us is my website again. And under this umbrella, I provide services of massage therapy. I've been a massage therapist for 19 years for the state of Florida. I am a group fitness instructor for 45 plus communities. I am still teaching to this day. Imagine that after 40 years of dancing and teaching professionally, I'm still teaching. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I love it. I am an Amazon bestseller book co-author educator speaker i am an area director for toastmasters international as well and i am very honored and proud to be here and yes i'm a certified canine massage therapist you know why because our dogs need massage therapy too so remember that don't forget and yes my gift to you one hour free of charge life coaching you may need it more than you think. So I'm here for you and my phone number. Please text me because I am so busy that most of the time I don't answer the phone. 772-475-0126. Every, every, all the info is in my website. So please check it out. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. I'm so glad that you brought this topic up. This is a topic that's well needed and people need to hear about it and they need direction. They need guidance. So Thank you so much today for talking about this topic and, you know, really bringing the information out there and making people feel comfortable so they can contact you and, and to also look at the right resources to get the right help. And thank you so much. This has been amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Stacey. It's my joy and honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. Oh, you too. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>